It's time for some more EPP curves. Hello and welcome back to the Maker Jane channel where I share all things English paper piecing from tips and tutorials to projects and more. So if you love EPP like I do, please consider subscribing. In this video, we are continuing on with our Flowers and Butterflies EPP skill building series, and we're working on the final pattern of the series, pattern number four, EPP curves. So far in this series, we've covered everything from the very basics of English paper piecing, working with hexagons. We moved beyond hexagons and started working with shapes that are skinnier and have sharp points. Then we moved into fussy cutting and I taught you how to choose the right fabrics for fussy cutting and how to actually do fussy cutting using your own DIY fussy cutting template. And finally, in this section of our series, we're covering curves. In this video, I'm going to walk you step by step how to baste and stitch the EPP curves that are in the butterfly motif of the pattern. And you're going to learn both convex curves and concave curves. If you're new to the series, be sure to check out the links down below in the description where I've got all the information on how you can get started participating in the series. I'm really excited to get into stitching this butterfly with you. So let's head over to the work table and we'll get started with these curves. First, let's go over the materials you'll need to put your butterfly together. I'm gonna be working this time around with just three fabrics. In the example that I have here, I actually used four fabrics. So you can see how there's many different ways that you can arrange fabrics and work with fabrics. So take advantage of those coloring sheets that are inside of the pattern and use those first, get a feel for what colors you want to use, what fabrics you want to use, and that will help you in choosing how many fabrics you should use for your butterfly. I've also got my coordinating thread and I've got my basic stitching supplies. I've got what I use for a thimble. I've got a couple of needles here. I've got my thread snips, my fabric shears, and a clip that I like to use because these pieces that we're going to be working with are going to be very skinny. And so I find the clip works much better than a needle miner when working with these skinnier shapes. Keep in mind also for this video, for the purpose of this video, I'm going to be working with the large butterfly and it's just going to be easier for me to demonstrate on camera how to put all these pieces together. So um, keep that in mind as we go along. So if you're going to be making the small or the medium, the assembly process is going to be the same, but your template pieces will be smaller and skinnier than what I will be working with here. So I've got my template pieces here. I'll go over those in just a second. You're also going to want a glue pen for curves. When basting curves, you can thread baste a convex curve, but you cannot thread baste a concave curve. So you will need a glue stick for the concave curves and I prefer working with glue rather than thread basting anyway. So that's what I'll be demonstrating here in the video. Another thing that I want to take note of and mention is because we're working with these skinny shapes, the templates that you cut yourself, you want to make sure that you're using cardstock and not just regular printer paper. You want the templates to have some stiffness to them so that they will hold their point when you're stitching them and when you're basting your fabric against them. So let's go over the templates real quick. And I want to show you the different templates that you should have for your butterfly, how many you need of each one, and how they're arranged. So the most obvious um, template that you're going to see for this butterfly is the outer upper wing shape, and it looks like a crescent moon. You should have two of these. They are the, exactly the same shape, but you're going to need to mirror one of them. And you're going to be mirroring most of the templates for this pattern because we are working with a butterfly, which is symmetrical. So we want to have symmetry in our pieces. So just make sure that you take one of your shapes and you flip it over like so, so that they're actually facing each other. So these are going to be the upper wing portion. This is the next shape that you should have for the upper portion of the wings. 
and these are going to go in the lower curve right there. And then you should also have these teardrop shapes that will fill in this upper portion of that wing. This is the upper wings of the butterfly. Then we have the body pieces here. So this is the upper body and this is the lower body. And then we have the lower wing portion. And the lower wing is really only made up of two pieces, uh, two shapes. So we have this first shape here, which is kind of a, a cup shape. So those are gonna go here. And then our final pieces are these shapes here, which are the skinniest pieces we'll be working with for the butterfly. And these are going to go here. So this is how we're gonna be laying out our butterfly. Go ahead and grab your fabrics and based on your coloring sheets and how you have determined how you want your butterfly to look and what colors you want to go where, we're gonna organize our templates based on those colors. So I've decided that I want my outer wing pieces to be in this fabric. I want this these lower wing pieces to also be in this floral fabric. And then I want to have these pieces, which are a part of the upper wing, and I want these pieces, which are a part of the lower wing, to be in this yellow fabric. I want these upper wing pieces to be in this floral fabric as well. And then I'm gonna do the body pieces in this light purple fabric here. So go ahead and do this same exact step with your template pieces, just setting them on the fabrics that you want them to correspond to so that um, you can stay organized and not get your pieces mixed up. And before we can baste our fabric, we need to cut out our fabric. So we're gonna do that first. And I'm gonna start off with my body pieces. So for these pieces, we're working with straight edges and we're working with convex curves, which is basically an, a curve that faces out this one and this one, and then this tight curve here. These are all curves that face outward. Just like usual, we're gonna tack our template down onto our fabric, making sure that we have enough room around the edges for our seam allowance. And remember, if you have certain areas that you wanna avoid or that you want to highlight in your fabric, then you wanna consider that as you're placing your template pieces. So now would be the time to do any of that fussy arrangement that you might wanna do. Once you have your templates in place, then you're gonna go ahead and cut around them, making sure that you leave enough of a seam allowance. And this is just like we've done for all of our previous patterns that we've worked on so far in this series. You may find that you want to actually put a couple of dots of glue on these longer, skinnier shapes because that's going to help your fabric stay in position as you're trimming around them and as you're basting around them. Now that we're working with pieces that need to be mirrored, we need to make sure that before we tack that second piece down that it's actually mirrored. So I've got those two in place. I'm going to go ahead and put these two down next and then I'll do all the cutting at once. So same thing, I'm gonna go ahead and put this one down here because that seems to be um, the best use of the fabric. I'm making sure I have enough space here for both shapes seam allowance. And I'm looking at my space around the rest of the shape to make sure that I have enough room for seam allowances. So I'm gonna get this first shape in position first, tack down, and then I'm gonna bring my other shape over and I'm gonna look at this and remember that I need to make it mirror. So I wanna actually flip it over so that it, it's, it's mirroring itself. And then I can decide where I wanna actually place that on my fabric. And this is where you wanna make sure that you're really careful with holding your fabric and your pieces in place. That's why I went ahead and put two dots of glue on these longer pieces because as we're cutting, this fabric and the templates can have a tendency to move uh, wherever they're not actually glued down. And just having that extra little dot of glue can help prevent that from happening. Okay, so let's start with these skinny pieces. I'm just gonna tighten up my seam allowance a little bit, closer to a quarter of an inch. They don't have to be exact. 
But as you start working with skinnier pieces like this, you really don't want any extra fabric, any more fabric than you need. Because this is a very skinny area and the more fabric in your seam allowance, the more thick it's going to be folding that fabric over the skinny portion of the template. So keep that in mind. You may want to trim your seam allowance down just a little bit very carefully to reduce some of that extra bulk. And then for this point, we wanna get rid of this extra fabric because this is just gonna get in our way. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna bring my scissors in and about a quarter to three eighths of an inch away from the tip of my paper, I'm going to make a blunt cut right straight across because that extra fabric really wasn't necessary. This is our seam allowance, and that's what we wanna make sure we retain. So your fabric should kind of look something like this as you're following along your curve, making sure you still have your seam allowance. So do the same thing for the rest of your pieces, and then I'll come back and I'll show you how we're gonna baste these shapes. Okay, here are all of the pieces for the butterfly, and this is what they should look like. So each of the pieces, as you can see, has a nice, seam allowance all the way around and I've also trimmed the tips where the sharp points come so that any extra fabric has been removed but still leaving plenty of fabric there for seam allowance and you can see how I've followed the contour of the curves with that seam allowance. The next step is to baste. So let's begin with basting the simplest pieces, which are gonna be these body pieces. Then we'll move on to the more complex shapes. So we're gonna begin with the straight sides. I like to start on the straight sides because it just creates a good foundation for the rest of the basting process. So go ahead and baste one of your straight sides and then the other straight side. And next, we're gonna work on the concave sides. And it doesn't matter which side you choose first, just pick a side, put your glue down. And when you start to actually press your fabric over, I found that it, it's easier to get the point that meets the straight side started first, and then work my way around that curve. And you'll notice how the fabric is gathering up, up a little bit and bunching up around that curve. And that's exactly what it needs to do as you baste around a convex curve. You're going to have extra fabric uh, on the inside in your seam allowance, and it will create these little creases. The creases are perfectly normal, but what you want to be mindful of is you don't want your creases to fold all the way to the edge of the fabric. See how I have a little bit of a gap between the tip of my crease and the edge of my fabric here? There's just a few threads of fabric that are actually flat. There's no crease there, and that's what you want. If that crease came all the way to the edge of the fabric, then you might end up seeing a little point from the opposite side, from the front, along that nice smooth curve. And if you do see that point, then you wanna to try to fix it. Just take your time with this, making sure that you get nice sharp points here, and you also want a nice sharp point where those two curves meet. Now we're gonna base the upper body portion. So just pick any straight side, either one of those straight sides, and start with that, and then work your way over to the other straight side. And now that those sides are done, we can now work on this curve. And this is a much tighter convex curve than the lower body piece was. And the process is the same, but it's gonna look slightly different once we start basting it. We're gonna put the glue down just like we normally would as if it was a straight side. And you're gonna start at one tip and you're gonna work your way around that curve and you can rotate your piece as you go. So 
you're going to end up with a lot more fabric bunching together as you go around tighter curves like this. And you'll notice that my creases are actually now going all the way to the edge of my piece. And they're starting to create these little points. If I were to flip this over and look at it from the front, front we might start seeing these little points sticking out, whereas we want a smooth curve. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how to fix those creases so that you don't get those little points along your smooth curve. Basically, I just come in and I take my fingernail and I press along that crease and I press it away from the edge of the curve. And what that does is it, it just it brings that point further into your seam allowance so it's not right up against the edge of the curve. So you, that usually works the first time. If for some reason you try that and you're still seeing little sharp points around your curve, then what I recommend is opening up your seam allowance and readjusting it. So like this one here at this edge, we could readjust and I just lift it up and then use my fingernail or the tip of your finger would work as well to push those creases into position where they're not going to actually bring that fold all the way to the edge. So that looks pretty good. That's what you're going for. These shapes up here have both convex and concave curves and we'll cut, we'll get to those later. But I want to work with these teardrop shapes here because they're very similar to the upper body shape that we've already basted. Basically, it's the same exact concept. So we have some straight sides and then we have this very sharp convex curve, just like we had on our upper body piece. So this is gonna give you a little bit more practice on working with that tight convex curve. And just like we did with the upper body piece, I like to start these along the straight edge. But in reality, the shape really only has one long side because there's really only one corner. The corner is right here at the tip and the side goes along this way and then it curves around and comes back up back towards the point. So it's really just one long side, but we're gonna treat it as if it was different sides because it is one long side and you can only base so much at a time. So we're gonna go ahead and start on one of the straight sides and we'll work our way around as we go. And it doesn't matter which side you choose, just pick whichever side you wanna start with. I'm right-handed, so I'll be starting on the right. If you were left-handed, you could start here on the left and then work your way around this way. So I only put glue down for the length that I can baste at, this, at one time. And basically, I, I glue the entire length of that straight up to where it starts curving. And then you just press your fabric, just like it's a normal straight edge, onto that glue, making sure that you're, you know, you're feeling the edge of the paper with your finger. And that will help you ensure that your fabric is right up against your paper, which is what you want for an accurate shape. Now that we have that side done, we need to work our way around. So I'm going to turn my shape and you'll notice I have a little bit of glue that's still exposed. So I'm just going to continue on with a little bit more glue. And I'm gonna go all the way around that curve with my glue. And I'm gonna stop when that side straightens back out. So here's where we're going to baste our convex curve. And just like we did with the body shape, you just use your non-working hand to rotate your template around as you use your working hand to fold your fabric up and over onto your template finger pressing it down into the glue just like normal. Okay, we'll come back and we'll take a look at those, uh, those folds in a little bit to make any adjustments we might need to make, but we're gonna continue with our glue down the remaining straight edge of the shape, making sure that we come all the way down to the tip and press nice and firm 
along everything so that we have a nice sharp point down here at the end. So let's take a look at our convex curve and see how our pleats did. So you'll notice that they're looking pretty good. My folds are not coming all the way to the edge of the template. They stop right about there. And that one still, it stops before it comes to the edge. So I'm pretty happy with how this turned out. So there isn't really any adjustments that I'm gonna make to this. We can look at it from the front just to make sure. And that looks like a pretty smooth curve. I do the same exact thing with the other matching shape. So I have a little bit of points I'm noticing right here and I can actually feel it with my finger. That crease is going right to the edge and you can see just a faint little point right there. So that I do need to adjust. Um, this is actually another way that you can test to make sure that you have a smooth uh, curve is to just run your finger along it and see if you feel any little points sticking out. And I definitely feel one there. Uh, there might be another one right in here, but the rest of it seems to be pretty good. So what I'm going to do to fix this is I'm just going to take my thumb nail and I'm basically just pressing right there and I'm pressing that crease in towards the seam allowance. And that actually fixed it. So sometimes that's all it takes. Okay, so I got a little bit carried away and I put my glue down too soon. We don't actually want to glue first. When we're working with concave shapes, we have a slight concave curve. The first thing we need to do is we actually need to clip our fabric. So ignore the glue that I've put down, grab your fabric scissors, and you wanna make sure they have a nice sharp point because you want to have control over the clips that you're gonna make. What we wanna do is we wanna clip into our fabric and we wanna get as close as we can to the edge of our paper but without coming right up to the edge of our paper. So notice that I did not come all the way to the edge of the paper. I still have some fabric between the tip of my clip here and the edge of my paper, just a few threads of fabric. And depending on how uh, tight a curve it is, this is a pretty flat curve. So I'm gonna space out my clips about a quarter of an inch apart. I'm coming just shy of the paper. And that's very important because that's gonna be our remaining seam allowance. And we wanna have a little bit of fabric there to actually stitch into. And you'll notice that our curve is very slight and it starts straightening out right about here. And then it's a straight edge down to the point. So you really only need your clips where it's curved. I'm not gonna add any more clips along this edge. And this clipping rule is only for concave curves. We've already worked with convex curves on these other shapes here, and we didn't have to do any fabric clipping. So that's gonna be the same on all the rest of our shapes. On these outer curves, we don't do any clipping. We're only clipping for the concave curves. So now that we have our curve clipped, I'm gonna go ahead and clip my other curve. So now you can put your glue down, and what you're gonna do is you're just gonna take that fabric edge that you just clipped into, and you're gonna Get up underneath it and you're going to press it directly into the edge of your template along that edge. And what happens when we do that, because we've clipped into our fabric, the fabric will naturally spread and open as needed, allowing you to get a nice smooth edge along your concave curve. So we'll do the same thing with this other piece along that same curve. We've already clipped into it, remember? So now we can glue the fabric down to the template. So that's how you're gonna work with concave curves. So now we need to move over to the convex curve, which are these outer curves. So again, I like to start where the edge is straight and then I will continue around with my glue along that curve, like so. And again, you're just moving your shape with your non-working hand and tacking down your fabric, pressing down your fabric with your working hand. And if you need a little bit of extra glue on some areas that don't wanna stay stuck or that uh, is fabric on fabric, you can come back through with your glue stick and just add, add fabric as needed. 
And again, we're just double checking to make sure that we don't have any sharp points along that curve and I don't feel any points sticking out. So I'm happy with that. And we'll do the same thing for this other curve. Do any fingernail pressing if you need to. And then just double check that curve, make sure it's nice and smooth. Both the convex and the concave shapes or at sides of this shape are very slight. So we're gonna use the same exact technique that we just used on this shape for these concave sides here and here and the convex sides here and here at the bottom. To start on the sides that have a straight edge and the concave area. But before we put our glue down, we're gonna clip into our fabric just in the area where we have our concave curve. And really our curve is only from about here to here. The rest of this side is straight, so we don't need to do any more clipping there. So I'll do the same thing on this other piece. And notice I'm putting my clips closer together because even though this is a slight curve, it's a short curve. And I wanna make sure that my fabric lays flat in this area. So now that that curve is clipped, we can now put our glue down. And I'm gonna go ahead and glue this entire edge because I'm have i intending to base that entire edge. And I'm gonna start down here at the straight side making sure that this seam allowance doesn't get pulled up underneath the paper as I'm basting. So that's what your concave side of this shape should look like once it's basted. We'll do the other shape, same thing. Let's go ahead and move to the opposite side, which is a convex shape. So we'll do that now. Add our glue for that entire side. And you really can start at any end of this side, whatever's comfortable for you. Just make sure that you get your nice sharp point down here at the end and that you make sure you don't have any uh, creases that cause any sharp points along this edge here. So there's just a slight gathering of our fabric here. And if it doesn't all stick down to the paper, that's fine. So we'll do the same thing on the other shape that matches it and just work your way down that side. Okay, and finally we will baste this short little convex shape starting at one end and just work your way along that entire curve. Making sure that you've got nice crisp points at either end and do the same thing for the other shape. So what I like to do for these short little curves is I actually press from one corner and then I come back and I press from the other corner and then I do the middle last. And that kind of helps that curve get its shape. And remember, you do have some gathering going on and that's totally fine if your seam allowances don't lay flat. You just want them to be tacked down so that they don't keep popping up as you stitch. And if you need to, add a little bit of extra glue underneath that seam allowance to help hold it down for you. Let's move on to these swoosh shapes. We are progressively getting a little bit uh, more and more advanced with our concave curves, getting more and more of a curve going. And as we, when we finally end up on these shapes, these are gonna be our most challenging shapes. So that's why I'm saving those for last and kind of helping you ease into this whole basting process. So just like we've done up to this point with shapes that have both types of curves, we're gonna do the exact same thing. So we're gonna address our concave curve first by grabbing our fabric scissors and clipping into our fabric. Now, because this is a tighter curve than any of the other curves we've done so far, we wanna make sure that our clips are closer together. So I'm gonna go ahead and start my first clip right about here, and I'm also making sure that I don't clip right up to the paper. And I'm gonna do my next clip really close to the first one that I did. And notice that my clips, I'm clipping perpendicular, or in other words, I'm clipping at 90 degrees to the edge of my paper. I'm not 
coming at it an angle like this. I'm making sure that I am directly straight in from the edge of the paper. That is going to help your fabric lay down flat like you want it to. You'll notice that the curve settles out just a little bit. It's There's still a bit of a curve here, so we still need some clips, but we don't need them to be as close together. So you'll adjust the spacing of your clips as needed as the curve straightens out. About from here down, we've got a pretty straight side, so I don't think I need any more clips there. So let's do the same exact thing with the other shape that matches this. Now we can start basting those sides, just like I've shown you already. So we'll add our glue to that entire side. And starting down here at the straight edge, we'll make sure we get that straight edge nice and secured. And then just follow along the rest of that edge, pressing our fabric directly into the paper, just like we came at it with our scissors, we're gonna come at it the same way with our finger. And you'll see our fabric opens up more because it's a tighter curve. Let's do the same thing on the second piece that matches it. Now we can come back and do the convex portion of this shape. So again, I like to start along the straight edge, getting a nice sharp point there, pressing the fabric into the paper, and then coming back around with my glue for the remaining portion of that curve. And then I always test that edge. Okay, so we got one down. Let's finish off with the other one here. Do any adjustments to your gathering. So our swoosh is done. We just have these last two pieces left. So as I said, these are our most challenging pieces, but we've already covered everything we need to know in order to tackle these pieces. So it's gonna be the exact same process. It's just, there's more of it. We've got a couple of things going on. We have the outer curve, which is our convex curve. And then we have these inner curves and there's actually two side by side. This is totally doable and totally possible. So we're just gonna take the exact same steps that we've done for all of our other pieces. And we're gonna combine that knowledge now for these pieces. We want to work with the concave sides first. And we're going to start clipping in these areas. Now, these are the tightest concave curves that we've worked with so far. The tighter the curve, the closer our clips need to be. Okay? So you can start on either curve. It doesn't matter which one you start at, but you want to make sure that you are starting your clips and you wanna make sure that they're nice and close together because this is a very tight curve. And if you space your clips too far apart, your fabric isn't gonna to wanna to lay flat. And then it's gonna start pulling on your seam allowance from over here, which you don't want. So you wanna make sure that you're putting your clips nice and close together, just like this for these curves. You wanna make sure you're leaving just a little bit of fabric between the tip of your clip and the edge of the fabric. Just do exactly what I'm doing around both of those concave curves. And I would say my clips are about an eighth of an inch apart, maybe a little bit less, and you can experiment. Try out several different butterflies and experiment with the distance or the space between your clips and see what you can see what you can work with. So I'm gonna do the same exact thing for my other one, and then I'll come back and I'll show you how to base this. Now we are ready to baste. So we'll grab our glue stick just like normal. And again, it doesn't matter which curve you start with, just pick one curve, and you're gonna go ahead and add your glue along the edge of that curve. Then we're gonna come back through and I like to start kind of in the middle of my curve and just press my fabric right up and over the edge of my paper. 
end the glue. And then I work my way out to one side and then I work my way out to the other side. It's really that easy. And it's nice and smooth because we've made enough clips close enough together to make the fabric lay nice and flat without pulling on our seam allowance from the outside. Let's go ahead and do the same exact thing over here. So I like to put glue right on top of the fabric that I just folded over because we're gonna fold onto that fabric and we want the glue to hold everything down. And I bring glue all the way down to the very tip because I want to make sure that my fabric is tacked down to that tip. That's going to help me get a nice sharp point there. So for the second curve, I like to start pressing towards the center where my two curves meet at this point. I like to start here because that helps me to get the sharp point where they meet right there. And then I just work my way around the rest of that curve pressing my fabric up and over along the entire curve. And there is our first concave curves of the shape. So you can come back through and test it. Usually you're not going to have any pointies on these inner curves because we're not working with any creases. So they should come out nice and smooth as long as you put enough clips close enough together along that curve. So let's baste this other one in the same exact way. And again, you can start with either curve. It doesn't matter which curve you start with. So for this one, I'm gonna start with the larger curve. And I'm gonna start in the middle because that kind of helps get the fabric balanced out so it doesn't pull too far to one side or the other. And then I go to one side just like that, and then I go over to the other side. Then we'll go and do the second curve, and it's the second curve that I like to start pressing towards the center where the two curves meet. And then I work my way around. So that's how easy it is to baste these concave curves. Now let's move on to the convex curve. And we've already done many convex curves, so this should be fairly straightforward and a little bit easier actually than what we've already worked with. So just like we've already done, we're gonna lay down our glue kind of in stages. We don't necessarily need to put glue down for the whole thing. So I just start at one tip and work my way around as I go and then add more glue when I get to the point where I left off and continue until I get to the opposite tip all the way at the other side of the shape. Making sure that you feel that tip, the fabric coming over at that tip. Now you'll notice I have fabric lifting up here and I can actually see my template underneath. That's because I don't have any glue right in here. So I'm gonna come back through with my glue stick because I want to make sure that this fabric stays down over my template because I want to stitch that and I don't want my template being exposed. That's how easy that is to do the convex curve. And then of course you can always come back and feel for any uh, points or ridges where you might need to make any adjustments to your seam allowances. Do the last one in the exact same way and because I'm right-handed, I'm starting over here. If you were left-handed, you could start here and work your way around in this direction. So that's it for basting. Now that we have all of our pieces basted, we can begin stitching them together. Before we begin stitching, we need to lay out our pieces so that we know where they're gonna go. And I always recommend doing this with any EPP project that you're doing because it just helps you stay organized and know what needs to happen next. So go ahead and lay out your pieces. I'm going to go ahead and start with the upper wings. I'll show you how to put those together first, and then we'll move to the lower wing. So for the upper wings, there are three main shapes. You've got this outer wing shape, and then you have these two inner wing shapes. And these three shapes make up the upper wing, like so. Before we can join this shape, we need to attach these to each other. But you'll notice that we don't really have any kind of landmark here on 
where this ends. So the only way to determine and make sure that this piece is in the correct position is to line up our points here, but to also make sure that the edges of the shape are nestled right in with each other. So if I move this upper piece too far to the left, you'll notice it starts pulling away from the lower piece. And if I move it too far to the right, you'll notice that my points no longer line up down here and I start getting a gap between my pieces here. So those are the, the ways that you can make sure that you're actually in the right spot is everything should be nice and nestled right up against each other along this seam and then your points should match up right here. Once you've got everything in position, then you just simply flip it over onto the other template and go ahead and clip it because that way you know it's in position. And we're gonna go ahead and start stitching down here at our points because that's the one spot that we have that lines up. Folding back our seam allowances as needed and just like we've done with every English paper piecing project that we work on, we're gonna start our seam with some securing stitches and a knot right where those two points come together. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna stitch a whip stitch from here until my shapes start to come apart. See how I've got one fabric going one direction and my other fabric's going in another direction? So when I get to this point right here, I'm gonna stop whip stitching and then I'll show you what I'm gonna do next. Okay, I'm coming up on that point where my fabrics start going in different directions. I'm not gonna knot, I'm not gonna do anything. I'm just gonna take one more stitch so that I'm right where those fabrics change direction. Then I'm gonna remove my clip and we're gonna open our pieces up because now we are going to change our stitch. We were doing a whip stitch, but now we can't do a whip stitch anymore because our edges are not gonna line up properly. So we need to open up our pieces and we're going to change over to a flat back stitch. So I like to grab my clip again for this part. Once I have my pieces open, I just put the clip kind of straddling both pieces and that will help hold those pieces together so that they don't pull apart like this. And we're just gonna continue stitching, but instead of a, a whip stitch, we're gonna do a flat back stitch. So to do a flat back stitch, we are picking up just a little bit of fabric from both sides along the back of the work. We're not sending our needle through to the front. We are basically just skimming the back of our work from one side to the other. And we're picking up fabric as close as we can to the edge of our templates and pulling our thread through. Notice I'm not picking up fabric way out here. I'm only picking up the fabric that's closest to the edges. The reason for that is because when we pull on this thread, it's gonna pull on that fabric and you don't wanna pick up too much fabric because it'll start pulling your seam allowance away from your template. And you just work your way down the seam in this, in this manner. And this is how we are going to stitch all of our curves for this butterfly. So here we are at the tip and I just folded that seam allowance back so that it's not in my way, so that I'm only picking up the, the fabric that's underneath. And again, just make sure you're not sending your needle through to the front of your work. You'll take your last stitch and then you're gonna do your securing stitches, which is the same way that we do them for the whip stitch. We're gonna do them for the flat back stitch. So you'll take a couple of flat back stitches in the same place hopefully without knotting your thread. There we go. You can do one or two, and then your final stitch will be your knotting stitch. So before you pull your thread all the way through, just like normal, we're gonna send our needle through that loop and make our knot. 
then what you can do is bury your thread because we are done with that seam and clip your thread. So that is how you attach these two pieces to each other. Go ahead and grab the two pieces that correspond to the ones we've just done for the other wing and do the exact same thing. Once you have that finished, then we'll come back and I'll show you how to attach this outer wing portion to these pieces. So you'll notice we have uh, a couple things going on. First of all, we have a place where we know we want everything lined up. We know that we want this point to line up with this point. The other thing that you'll notice is we don't really have a landmark for where these sharp points are to end up. So we're not gonna start at the outside because we don't really have any indicator showing us where to actually start with these points. We do have our indicator on the inside though, so that's where we're gonna start. And we're only gonna stitch one curve at a time. So flip your outer wing piece over onto your inner wing piece and line up this point here with this point here just like so. And you'll notice that when we do that, we actually have a little length where we've got both fabrics in line with each other. And when they're in line with each other like this, we can actually do a whip stitch. So that's how we're gonna begin. We're gonna actually start our stitching right here where these two edges meet, right here. We're gonna do our securing stitches with our knotting stitch, and then we're gonna do a few whip stitches. Once we have that secured in place, then, just like we did with our pieces that we sewed right before this, we're gonna transition over to a flat back stitch. So there's my securing stitches, here's my knotting stitch, and now I'm ready to continue on with a whip stitch. And when you get to the place where your fabrics start changing direction, so my yellow fabric is going to the right, my purple fabric is going to the left, when you get to that point, that's when it's time to open up your work, like so, and grab your clip so that it will hold it together for you as you transition to the flat back stitch and continue along the rest of this seam until you get all the way down here to the point. So without knotting your thread or bearing your thread or anything, you just change your stitch over to a flat back stitch, just like so. And remember, we're just skimming the back. We are not actually puncturing through to the front of the work. We're not going through the paper. We are only skimming the back of the paper. The trick with the flat back stitch is to make sure that you are pulling tight enough on your stitch so that it's closing up your seam here. You don't wanna have any gap between your pieces. And that can only be achieved if you pull tight enough on your stitches. Just be careful that you don't pull too tight and possibly break your thread or cause any other strange distortion in your in your fabric. So I've reached the tip and I'm just doing a couple of securing flat back stitches and then this final stitch is my knotting stitch and now I can bury my thread and clip it. Just like we did this seam, we're going to do the exact same thing on this seam. And you'll notice it looks like things shifted just a little bit. So I have a little bit of gap, but I'm going to fix that. I'm going to show you how to fix that right now. I'm going to flip my work over. And I'm going to line up the point here with the point or the edge here. Just like we started the other seam, we're doing the exact same thing. And we're going to start our seam in exactly the same way by burying our thread, doing our securing stitches, and our knotting stitch. Okay, there's my two securing stitches. Here's my knotting stitch. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna adjust this slightly because I want to give myself a little bit of distance where I can do a whip stitch. And there's really only room for maybe one 
or two whip stitches here. So I'm just going to do two quick whip stitches and then I'm going to go ahead and open up my work. So I've already closed that gap just by those first initial stitches. So I need to continue along now with a flat back stitch. I'm going to open this up a little bit so I can see where I want to end. So it looks like the tip of my shape is right about here. So I'm just going to take note of that. I'm going to put my clip on to hold my work. And now I'm going to continue on with the flat back stitch until I get to that tip. And here is the tip where you'll do your securing stitches and your final knotting stitch. Then bury your thread and snip. So that is how you put together one half of the top set of wings. Go ahead and finish the second wing by adding the outer portion to the inner portion, just like I showed you here. And if you have to, pause the video, rewind, watch it again, until you've got your second wing assembled. Once you do, then I will come back and I'll show you the next step on how to finish the upper portion of the body. Okay, we're going to finish the top butterfly portion off by attaching the body piece to both wings. And in order to do this, we're going to start with one side and then we'll come back and add the other side. So the only reference point that we have for lining anything up is going to be this point here and where our points come together here at the bottom or the tip of the wing. So that's, that's your reference point. You're going to go ahead and line up the tip of the body with the tip of the wings. Put them face to face, like so. And then what I like to do, because we're going to be adding the other wing at this point down this side in the near future, I'm going to go ahead and start my stitching at the opposite end so that when I get to this end, I don't have to cut my thread and rearrange. I can just continue after I've brought the other piece over. So I'm going to flip this around, making sure that I still have my points lined up at the end here. And then I'm going to go ahead and stitch this down just like normal. And then doing a simple whip stitch until I get to that point. I'm not going to bury my thread. We're going to open everything up. I'll set that down for a second and I'm going to get my other wing and line up these pieces. Line up the point of the body right here with the point of this wing. And if you need to, you can fold your seam allowances over so that you can find where your point is. We're going to pick up right where we left off and we're going to do our first couple stitches, which is just to secure everything together and to start that seam. The hardest part about this portion of the butterfly is making sure that your points are lined up and that you're actually picking up fabric from both fabrics. So once you have those initial stitches securing everything together, you can continue on with the whip stitch until you get to the end of this seam. And then you'll do two more securing stitches in place and finish with your knotting stitch and burying your thread and clipping your thread. The next thing we need to do is work on the lower butterfly. And then after we've got this done, then we'll join them together. So just like with the upper butterfly, we have our wing pieces and we have our body piece. Before we can attach our body piece, we really need to put our wings together. So we'll start with our wings. And the wings for the bottom portion of our butterfly really only consist of these two shapes. So remember, we have a slight curve in between these two shapes. It's easier to keep everything lined up if I start my stitching at this end. So what I do, rather than try to line everything up first, what I do is I go ahead and flip my pieces face to face. I just run my finger along this edge and I make sure that both of my points are lined up right in line with each other. 
I don't want one sticking out farther than the other. And the best way I've determined to figure that out is with my finger. I can actually feel it. If we start our stitching at this end, that's going to keep that nice curve that we want right here nice and smooth. It's going to help prevent one shape sticking out farther than the other. So once you have your, your pieces in line with each other and you can feel that those points are lined up, then you can go ahead and grab your clip to hold everything in place. And what I actually want to do first is I want to adjust the pieces so that I've got a little bit of space where both of my fabrics are flush with each other because I'm going to start with a whip stitch. And then once these shapes start, you know, going in different directions, then we'll open it up and continue with the flat back stitch. Double checking that your points are lined up with each other. Open up your seam allowances as needed to get to those points and where you want to actually start stitching. Go ahead and start your stitch by burying your thread in the seam allowance as usual. And taking your first securing stitches. Then we'll continue down a little bit a little ways with a whip stitch. So I'm pretty much right at that point. So I'm going to go ahead and remove my clip, open the pieces up. You'll just continue with the flat back stitch all the way down until you get to the other end of your seam. Once you get down to your point, you'll take your securing stitches just like so, and your final knotting stitch, and do the same exact thing for the other wing. So go ahead and stitch the other two bottom wing portions together, just like we did here. And I'll be back to show you how we're gonna attach our lower body piece. And just like we did with the upper body portion, we're gonna do the same exact thing with this. We are going to line up our shapes along these points but we're gonna start our stitching at this point. So go ahead and put your pieces face to face. And because I'm right-handed, I'm gonna start over here and I'm gonna stitch towards the left. If you were left-handed, you would flip your work this way and you'd start here and stitch towards the right. And we want to line up the point of our body piece with the point of our wing. And I'm just folding my seam allowance under so that I can actually see where that point ends, which is right about here. So I'm going to line up my body piece point at that same spot. And you'll start your stitching just like we normally do. Bury your thread, do your securing stitches, and your knotting stitch. Once you've got those done, then you can do your whip stitch until you reach your points. I'm not going to bury my thread. I'm just going to open up my pieces and I'm going to set my needle down so that I can grab my other wing piece. I want to locate the points where those points come together on that wing. And that's where I'm going to line up with my body piece, just like so. So I'll put everything face to face and make sure that my points line up. like so. And I'm going to flip my work over because I'm right handed and I want to pick up where my thread is, which is over here on the right. I'm going to stitch in this direction. If you're left handed, you don't need to flip your work. You can just keep on stitching towards the right. And if you need to grab a clip to help you hold everything in place here. All right, here's my knotting stitch. And then you're going to continue down just like we did with the whip stitch until you get to the other end of your seam. Then you'll finish off your seam with your securing stitches and your knotting stitch. Then you can bury your thread and clip your thread and you'll have the bottom half of your butterfly assembled. Just like so. Now we can combine these 
and join them into a single butterfly. We want to start in the center because we don't have any other reference point out here on the outer edge. And this is probably the most difficult portion of the butterfly to stitch because we have all of these seams coming together in one spot. And notice we're working with two different seams. We have a seam coming down this way, and then we have a seam coming down this way. So we can't stitch them both at the same time. We have to do one and then come back and do the other. And the first thing we want to do is we want to get our points lined up. So the way I do this is I kind of fold back my seam allowances so that I can see where the point of my bottom body portion is. And I pull back the seam allowances on this half here so I can see where the point is on that body portion. And then I put them together like so. And that is the point where we want to begin our stitching. So we need to pull back our seam allowances so we can see where we need to put our needle. Just bend your seam allowances out of the way. Don't hesitate to get them out of your way because you really need them out of your way so you can see what you're gonna be doing and bend them however, however you need to to get them out of your way. So this is what it should look like when your seam allowances are folded out of the way. And I can already see right here, I've got my light purple fabric from the body on one side and I've got my light purple fabric right there under my thumb from the body on the other side. So that is the point where I want to take my first stitches. So I'm gonna start by burying my thread on this side. I'm gonna pull my needle through and I'm just burying my thread like normal just to get it started. So I'm leaving a tail right there and I'm gonna reposition my hand so that I'm holding it, holding that tail so I don't pull it all the way through. And I'm just gonna take my needle and I'm gonna go through the body fabric on one side into the body fabric on the other side. And in my case, it's the light purple. So that's what I'm looking for. So just look for whatever color your fabric is for your body pieces, and that's where you're gonna send your needle. Take a couple of stitches just like that to secure your thread tail. Then you'll come back through with your last stitch and that's the stitch you're gonna knot. Once you get this, these first few stitches done and you've got your knot and it's all secured, it's gonna be a lot easier to reposition everything. So I'm gonna remove my clips because now what I wanna do is I wanna actually position my first seam. So notice I can flip my butterfly around and it's still secured right in the middle because of that, those stitches that we just took right in the middle. So I can now adjust this whole thing and line up for this first seam that we're gonna be stitching. I'm gonna fold the seam allowances that only pertain to that seam out of the way and I'm, I am gonna go ahead and grab a clip and hold the seam a little bit further down to help me have some freedom for my non-working hand to get those seam allowances out of the way. So this is where my thread is coming up out from out in the middle of where we just stitched those pieces together. And I wanna stitch as close to that as possible and I'm gonna treat it like a brand new seam. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna actually start as if I'm starting a brand new seam and I'm gonna add some securing stitches right here in the same spot, just like as if we're starting a new seam. And then I'm gonna take my knotting stitch like so. So that is the official beginning of this seam. And now what I'm gonna do is we're going to whip stitch until we get to a point where we can't whip stitch anymore. Because remember, there is a slight curve 
along this seam. When you get to the point where you can't whip stitch anymore, that's where we're going to open up our pieces and transition over to a flat back stitch. Okay, so here's where we've got a definite divergence of our different fabrics. My purple is going towards the left and my yellow is going towards the right. So I'm gonna open up here and finish off the seam with a flat back stitch. And here's my final stitch. So now I can take my securing stitches right here in that same spot. And finally, my knotting stitch. Then you're gonna bury your thread, clip your thread. So we just have this final seam here. We're gonna fold together along that seam. Now, because we've clipped our thread, uh, we need to initiate our thread somewhere near this point. But we don't have to go through what we went through at the very beginning when we were trying to find uh, our body pieces. So we can actually initiate our stitching with these yellow tips. So go ahead and bury your thread anywhere in that area just to kind of get your needle close to the area where you want to start stitching and start your seam in exactly the same way that we have always been doing. And then you can continue down that seam as long as you want to with your whip stitch and then transition over to the flat back stitch when you're ready and knotting when you get to the end. Bury your thread. and snip. Your curved butterfly is complete. So let's talk about finishing options real quick. In the next video I'll be sharing with you, I'm going to show you how to put together a hanging mobile and you can use any of the flowers and butterflies from this entire skill building series for that project. For that project, we will not be removing any of our papers. But if you want to use your butterfly for a project such as a quilt or maybe a pillow cover or even a wall hanging of some sort, you will most likely want to remove your papers. So before you remove your papers from your butterfly, I would go ahead and recommend giving your motif a nice good warm iron press. You want to have a dry iron and you want it to be uh, hot enough so that it can set your seam allowances and your stitches. So you'll see I've got a few little seam allowances sticking out here around the edges. You'll want to just flip your piece over on the right side, having the wrong side facing up towards you. And with your iron, come through and just press your seams back into place as needed. For this center section of the all these seam allowances that are coming together, what I recommend is adjusting them into a position that's gonna help them to lay as flat as possible. Then you'll put your hot iron down on your seams, help those flatten out. Once you've done that, then all of your seams and your stitching should be set. Then you can decide how you want to use your butterfly, whether it's in a quilting project or whether it's in uh, more of an alternative, project that isn't necessarily sewing related or quilting related like the hanging mobile that I'll be showing you in the next video. So before you remove your papers, you want to decide how you're going to use your motif. And I do have a video that we've already covered in pattern three. I showed you how to applique your motif onto background fabric. I will link to that video here and you can review that and see if that is something that you want to use for this butterfly. The possibilities of what you can applique this to are really endless. You could applique it onto quilt blocks. You could applique it onto 
uh, like I said, fabric for a pillow cover. You could even applique this onto fabric and then use that fabric to create a lampshade if you wanted to, for example. You could applique it onto a garment, like a skirt or maybe a jacket. So the, the options are really endless. But if you are going to applique, I've got the steps for how you need to prepare your butterfly and how you actually do the applique in that video that I reference above. So be sure to check out that video if you're interested in learning how to applique. In, next, in the next video, I'll show you how to treat your butterflies and your flowers for the Hanging Mobile Project. So look forward to that in our next video. I hope you enjoyed this butterfly and putting it together with me. It is a bit of a process, but I wanted to make sure that I covered as much as I possibly could here in this video for you so that you would have all the tools and all the resources that you need to tackle this pattern with confidence. I would love to hear your feedback. If you'd like to leave a comment down below in the description, let me know what you think of this pattern. And if there's anything new that you learned while you were working on the butterfly. Thank you for watching this video. And in our next video, we're going to bring all of our flowers and butterflies that we've made throughout this entire series together into a single project. And I'm gonna show you how to make a hanging mobile out of your flowers and butterflies. And you can use that to decorate any room in your home or give it away to a loved one. So I hope you look forward to that video. If you're not yet subscribed, be sure to do so and click that bell so that you get notified on when I post that next video. Until next time, keep on stitching.